So it turns out that shutouts are a lot more fun when you're on the pitching side of things. Brewers fall 3 to nothing. Let's talk about it next. You are Locked On Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning. It is Wednesday, May 18th. My name is Dominic Catronio, and thanks for making Locked On Brewers your first listen of the day. If you haven't already, hit subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our YouTube page. I know you use YouTube. I use YouTube every day. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. All the video version of these podcasts are posted there. I'm the statistician of Valley Sports Wisconsin, bringing you everything you need to know with your only daily podcast dedicated to the Milwaukee Brewers. So, things were looking great in yesterday's episode. A one nothing thrilling shutout over the Braves. Great pitching. It was dominant. Yesterday, it wasn't terrible pitching by any stretch of the imagination, but they fall 3 to nothing. They get shut out as the follow-up against the Braves. So we're going to talk about the game itself a little bit later on. We're going to talk about, you know, what's what's the issue for all of these games. It's the fourth time the Brewers have been shut out. But let's start with the headlines uh, from yesterday. The fact is, is another big blow, at least to bullpen and trying to figure out who's going to be middle relief, came down yesterday pregame in that J.C. Mejia, who was acquired from Cleveland uh, this past offseason in a trade for a minor leaguer, was suspended for 80 games without pay for violating the league's performance-enhancing drugs policy. And thus, Trevor Kelly was called up, the side armor from Nashville, uh, was called up to replace him in the current bullpen. Why does this seem like a big deal for a guy that has barely pitched for the Brewers? Well, we've talked about the fact that Look, the Brewers have a hole in the bullpen, and that is middle relief. You can't rely on Aaron Ashby to do it every single time. Granted, he shoved on Sunday. But aside from Brent Suter, you have no middle relief of a guy that can consistently give you multiple innings in medium to high leverage. Not saying automatically low average, because Brent Suter has pretty much only been low average leverage innings this season. You don't have anybody that can be those medium leverage innings that can get you from the bullpen to the main closers of the bullpen, the 7, 8, 9 guys. Even Trevor Gott can be thrown in that mix to the 6, 7, 8, 9 guys. So losing J.C. Mejia, yes, he's only pitched in two games and he's pitched poorly. He was auditioning for that role and that's pretty much gone by the wayside. Given yesterday was game number 37 and he's going to be suspended for 80 games, so He'll only be eligible for the last 45 or so games of the season, and thus he won't even be eligible for the postseason. Because again, just like Pedro Severino, when you violate the PED policy, you thus become ineligible for that season's postseason. He's only 25 years old. Uh, he was made some starts with Cleveland last year out of necessity, but... Uh, just another guy that the Brewers acquired to fill a need. Pedro Severino was supposed to be the backup catcher. Jason Mejia was going to audition to be the middle reliever. And now two guys they have acquired have turned out to have PEDs. Is this a reflection on the Brewers? No, it is not. Uh, it is just dumb mistakes by two big league baseball players. And now they are paying the consequence. And uh, it stinks. It just flat out stinks. Now, do I think Jason Mejia was going to be an impact player? No. But... He just ruined his only shot at doing that with the Brewers. So Jason Mejia is gone. Get him out of your thoughts until at least uh, August at the soonest. As for Trevor Kelly, again, he is back up now with the Brewers. Kelly, again, a side armor uh, coming up now from Nashville. He's pitched pretty well down in Nashville, a .69 ERA. He last pitched in the big leagues back in 2020 with Philadelphia. Uh, he's been a bit of a nomad over his career. Uh, again, right-handed. He's a UNC guy, at, a former Tar Heel. So this year in Nashville, uh, a one point, uh, or excuse me, an 0.69 ERA, 13 innings, just two runs, one earned, 17 strikeouts in those 13 innings. Uh, he spent all of 2021 with the Braves organization in AAA Gwinnett, where he pitched well, a 1.52 ERA, a 1.8 or a 1.08 ERA. Uh, he seems to be a one and done type guy, given he is from the sidearm slot. Uh, he is 29 years old, born in Providence, originally drafted by the Red Sox way back in the 36th round 
in 2015 out of UNC. Uh, here he is back in the big leagues for the first time in two years. See what kind of a role he can blossom into for the Brew Crew. So that was the big move that came pregame yesterday. As far as on the injury front goes, Andrew McCutcheon is still technically on the COVID IL as of yesterday. He has rejoined the team. However, he is still ramping up his baseball activities. So right now, the Brewers are playing with a short bench until they make a decision on Willie Adamas. They have not called up anybody else in the absence of Willie. In case you missed it, Willie rolled his ankle on Sunday in Miami. He was pulled from that game. He missed his first game of the year on Monday, and again, he was out of the lineup on Tuesday. The word was on Monday that, oh man, this looks bad. He's going to go over for more testing. He shows up to the ballpark on Tuesday, and he's feeling a lot better. In fact, he was lobbying to try to get onto the field for baseball activities. The Brewers decided against that, considered some more testing and some more treatment for him. So they're going to give him another day into today to see, do they put him on the injured list? Do they figure out, well, do they need to put him on the injured list retroactively and bring up Pablo Reyes, who is currently on the 40-man roster? For those who are asking, do you bring up Bryce Terang? Do you, do you have the kid make his big league debut? The answer is no, because you already have Pablo Lopez on your 40-man roster. So the way it would shake out is that if you are pulling Willie on the IL, Jace Peterson goes over to third base to split it with Mike Brasso. Luis Urias is still your everyday shortstop. And Pablo Reyes gets called up as your depth. He can play short. He can play left side infield. You can fill in on second base on occasion, but you've got Mike Brasso who can play second as well as Urias. So that's what you would do in that regard if you have to put Willie on the IL. The other thing is that you would have to add Bryce Terang uh, to the 40-man roster. So Bryce this season in AAA, he hasn't had a, a poor start by any means. Uh, this year, he's hitting 288 as a 22-year-old in AAA. He's got three homers, a 778 OPS. Uh, offense is also down in AAA, just like it is in the big league so far this season. It is starting to tick back up. But with Terang, he played 117 games last year, and he's still got time to develop. You're not in a rush to put him onto the 40-man in the middle of this season. You're probably going to see him get put on the 40-man uh, this offseason, if I'm not mistaken. I'm looking this up live, making sure that this is the year that he would be Rule 5 draft eligible. And double-checking here. Head over to Fangraphs, by the way, while you're at it, and subscribe to Fangraphs. It's the best website because it has not only if they're eligible for Rule 5, but also how many options they have remaining. And yep, he is eligible for Rule 5 this coming December, which means... If they're going to bring him on to the club, it's probably not going to be in May. They'll do it in the offseason in November when they have to. They're not going to rush him. They're not going to bring him and expect him to be the starting shortstop. That's why you have Pablo Reyes currently on the roster for to buy time for Terang to grow and develop into his role. So in the regard of Andrew McCutcheon, he could be back today. Probably not, though. I would expect him after the off day tomorrow and be back for the Nationals this weekend. And again, you need him against lefties. More on that a little bit later. So that's the big roster news to get to from uh, yesterday pregame that all broke out. And just to lay it all out there and to say, look, they got to figure out what's happening with Willie first and foremost. They've brought up Trevor Kelly, but he doesn't exactly solve the middle relief role because he only really goes one inning and done. So to have... Uh, Aaron Ashby more permanently in the bullpen would be nice, but it seems like they want to bulk him up between him and Brandon Woodruff on starting or piggybacking off each other as of late. Let's watch how that develop situation develops and now that, how that plays out as well. Let's actually talk about yesterday's game now. Before we do that, I'll tell you about LinkedIn. So springs in the air, right? I mean, look around. It's absolutely beautiful out with greenery popping up everywhere. It's time for renewal and growth personally and professionally, too. As your small business grows, LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. You can create a free job post in just minutes on LinkedIn Jobs, and you can reach your network beyond the world's largest professional network of over 810 million 810 million people. You can add your job with the purple hashtag hiring frame. And on your LinkedIn profile, that'll help spread the word that you're hiring so that your network can help you find the right people to hire. It's why small businesses 
rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So LinkedIn Jobs wants to help you find the candidates you actually want to talk to and faster. Did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? I'm on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Game recap, 3-0. Not much to recap here. Both teams only at six hits and five hits, respectively, for the Braves and the Brewers. Uh, Tucker Davidson, left-handed starter. Uh, Brewers had not seen him this season. Of course, he was only making his second appearance this season in the big leagues with the Braves making the spot start. Uh, They were expecting Spencer Strider to make this start, but he had to be used in the bullpen on Monday. So Davidson gets the call up from AAA Gwinnett. He pitched admirably. Five innings, three hits, no runs, three walks, three strikeouts. They had him on a tally. He only threw 69 pitches. 38 of them were strikes for Davidson. Adrian Hauser got the ball for the Brew Crew. He did not allow an earned run in this one. The key play was the big error by Mike Brasso in the fifth inning on a ground ball that you can't guarantee was going to be a double play off the bat of Ronald Acuna Jr., but it should have been at least one out and would have been two outs, and depending on where he got the out, you know, two men aboard probably. But uh, that big error led to the only run scoring against Hauser. He gets the tough luck loss in a quality start. Six innings, four hits, one unearned run, two walks, six strikeouts. He threw 101 pitches, 60 of them were strikes. For the Brewers, uh, I tweeted this uh, during the game as well on the, the note of quality starts. The Brewers have now thrown the second most quality starts in the National League, uh, also tied the second most quality starts in all of baseball with 16 of them after yesterday. The Padres lead the way with 19, by the way, in case you're wondering. Unfortunately, that is the eighth no-win quality start. That is also the second most in baseball, and San Diego also leads with nine in that category. So that's a theme that I would like to subside really fast as far as getting a quality start and not getting a win out of it, Uh, and that includes no decisions and losses. So Adrian Hauser is the latest to put his hat in that ring. The big key stat from this game for the Brewers is not the 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position, but rather the 10 runners left on base because a lot of the rallies came with two outs and they were getting multiple guys on. They drew six walks in this game yesterday. They only struck out eight times, but leaving 10 runners on base was the second highest total so far this season. They could not get the hit. And that's exactly what Craig Council said post game yesterday. They had opportunities, just didn't cash in. Those days happen. And the big fatal blow from this game Came in the top of the eighth inning off Brad Boxberger. He was one strike away from getting out of it without allowing a run. But Marcel Ozuna, a blast to left. The only question was, would it be fair? And it just hooked inside the foul pole for a 421-foot blast, 108 miles an hour off the bat for Ozuna. That is his sixth homer of the season and the first homer that Boxberger has allowed. Uh, some notes in this, Ronald Acuna Jr. did return in the lineup for the Braves in this game. He went one for three in the leadoff spot as the DH. He also drew two walks, and he stole a base in this game, too. It's his sixth of the year. That was off of Brad Boxberger in that eighth inning. As for the Brewers, uh, the only multi-hit game belonged to Hunter Renfro. He had a pair of singles. The Brewers did not have an extra base hit in this game. They only have one extra base hit in the series. It was Renfro's double On Monday, Luis Urias got another base hit. He has now got a hit in 11 of 13 games, and he has reached base in all 13 games so far this season for Wisho. So that's encouraging to see for him out of the two-hole while he's replacing Willie Adamas at short. Yelich drew a walk, but he cooled down as of late. Rowdy Telez has cooled down as of late. He drew two walks in this game. Bottom of the order, did next to nothing. They win a total of 1 for 11 with one walk drawn between Kane, Brasso, and Caratini. They also had four of the eight strikeouts. That wasn't a fun game. Just wasn't. Not much happened. 3 nothing game. Final score, Brewers now are 23-14. and 14. Braves are 17-20. and 20. So, leads me to talking about left-handed starters. And left-handed pitching 
overall. The Brewers saw Minter come in, also saw uh, Will Smith come in after this game too, so or during this game out of the bullpen too. So they saw three total left-handed pitchers in this game between the starter, Davidson, Minter, and Smith. So the way things shook out with the Brewers facing southpaws this season, when you grade them against the rest of the National League, the Brewers are hitting just 213 against left-handed pitching overall all season long. That is the fourth worst rate uh, batting average uh, tied the fourth worst batting average in the National League against left-handed pitching. They have just a 6.59 OPS against lefties. Yet, they still do have 12 homers against lefties, which is tied for the third most. A lot of those came against the Reds and against the Cubs. And the reason why I bring up the 12 homers, because you can tell it's a fluke in the fact that they only have 10 doubles against left-handed pitching. They have more homers against lefties then they do doubles. They have not been getting the same amount of production against left-handed starters and left-handed pitchers overall. Haven't been striking out you know, egregiously more than they have against right-handers, but they aren't drawing nearly as many walks as they are against righties. So this year, they have drawn 30 walks against left-handed pitching. Granted, you're going to see more righties throughout the year. Uh, at this point, against right-handed pitching, they're averaging right about a walk per 10 plate appearances whereas versus lefties they're averaging right about a walk per 11 to 12 plate appearances so that's where it it fluctuates a little bit for them so far this season we can go deep into the numbers and say why they're not hitting lefties as well you're missing Andrew McCutcheon now for the last week he should be returning as soon as possible but now the Brewers are just four and eight against left-handed starters this season and it's shocking because it's such there's a lot of righties in this order and lefties that have a reputation of hitting lefties well. Rowdy Tellez has a reputation of hitting lefties well. You've got a switch hitter in Victor Caratini. You've got Colton Wong, who normally hits lefties well. He's a 262 hitter for his career uh, against lefties. That's right on par with his career average. But this year, he has been tough against lefties. He's only hitting like a buck 30 this season against Southpaws. And Christian Yelich, as he's on his way back, he didn't get a hit in yesterday's game. Want to see him get a little more performance against left-handed hitters or left-handed pitchers. And we rarely see Omar Narvaez get the start against left-handed pitching. So it's not like an overwhelmingly left-handed lineup. It's uh, surprising to see how many righties struggle against lefties for the Brewers. And that's why you would love to see Andrew McCutcheon back sooner as opposed to later. Let's take a look at the overall scope of this team but before we do that with our friends at built bar reminding you about their awesome birthday cake puffs look if the built bars aren't your thing those are covered in 100 percent real chocolate with great flavors everywhere the puffs are these awesome protein infused marshmallows they are just so unique and you will not find anything like it. 150 calories and 16 grams of protein in a sweet treat that this flavor right now, this birthday cake puff flavor, is certainly one not to miss. It's only going to be around for a limited time, so you can make every day your birthday for grabbing something delicious and good for you with Built's Birthday Cake Puffs. So again, only 150 calories, only 9 grams of sugar, and 16 grams of protein. It's a great way to get some flavor in your diet and also build up some protein. We've got an offer code for you as well if you want to go try out the amazing selection at Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, the promo code LOCKED15, 15% off at Built, B-U-I-L-T.com. We had a Lorenzo Kane conversation, I want to say, two Mailbag Mondays ago. Maybe it was last Mailbag Monday. The end has not been pretty this year for Lorenzo Cain. Uh, it's, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it. Uh, he's playing solid defense, but we can talk about the throw here in just a second and Ronald Acuna Jr. testing his arm and why I don't think that was as much of a deal as maybe some folks might have thought. But I'm just going to read you Lorenzo Cain's slash line right now. 182 batting average, 247 on base, 216 slugging for a 463 OPS. He appeared in his 26th game of the year yesterday, 
A little bit of that is out of necessity, given now McCutcheon has been out. Uh, so having him play a little more center field with Tyrone Taylor playing left field. You've also seen Hunter Renfro get a random day off here and there. But also Kane is an everyday type center fielder defensively. He has still proven that. He can still track down fly balls. But it has not been a great year with the bat. And I'm just going to sit here and remind folks, I know it's sad here at the end. And I know it's frustrating. I think he knows that too. I think the Brewers are starting to realize that. You can't forget all the good he's done for the Brewers and for the Royals in his career. But I believe we are nearing, especially when McCutcheon comes back, nearing the time when you have to flip Kane to be a bench bat and see and just roll the dice with Tyrone Taylor. I want to see Tyrone Taylor get more consistent at bats. But to be fair, Tyrone has not gone out and grabbed it. Okay, we can't sit here and say for certain Tyrone is going to tear the cover off the ball. He's got a lot of swing and miss going on right now. He's only got a 259 on base this season just for a 588 OPS. Granted, he's not yet at 100 plate appearances. Uh, just one homer, seven runs batted in, only four walks, and 20 strikeouts in his 85 plate appearances. So you would like to see the strikeouts try to plateau off a little bit. He's striking out about one every four plate appearances, which is not a great rate. Uh, for Tyrone, still got five doubles this year. He's still got lightning quit hands. Maybe more consistent playing time will help him out, but hitting just 203 is not exactly grabbing it from Lorenzo Kane. So as automatic it seems to go to Tyrone Taylor, the Brewers, I imagine, are searching the market right now to see what they can do offensively and seeing what they can add. I know we had that really fun week uh, with the offense. Rowdy Telez, as we said, has cooled off. Hunter Renfro is getting knocks. He's leading the team still with nine home runs. Uh, but you don't have this just consistent offense going right now. It's been hot and cold. Peterson's been hot. But this is why hitting and bats are so expensive because it's so fickle. It's so hard to get some good guaranteed numbers out of your bats because what Willie Adamas did, the reason why the, the Brewers were able to acquire Willie Adamas is because he was not hitting well with the Rays last season. At the time of the acquisition, he was hitting just 197 with the Rays with five homers and a 625 OPS. So the Brewers are going to have to get creative if they want to replace somebody in center field if they feel they don't have that on their current roster or in their current farm system of somebody who's ready to be in the big leagues. Because right now, with the way things look in AAA and minor leaguers that maybe could make an impact this year, I mean, none of them are on the 40-man roster right now as far as the outfielders like David Dahl and Jonathan Davis, uh, Abraham Almonte, uh, Garrett Whitley. Th these guys are not on the 40-man. So the the thought is you're probably going to acquire somebody to fill in in that regard if you wanted to bring somebody in. But you still got now in Double A, the outfield has Sal Freilich, or Freilich Garrett Mitchell and Tristan Lutz in the outfield down in Biloxi. So, and Joey Weimers down there too. He just was player of the week in double A. So, you got reinforcements coming in the outfield. It just probably won't happen this year, which is where you, where you may see an acquisition happen here in the next month and a half or so if the Brewers feel it is time to do so. The Brewers, their 40 man, if I'm not mistaken, I'm double checking it here right now, is at 38. Uh, right now, thanks to the removal of J.C. Mejia being on the suspended list. So Co uh, Andrew McCutcheon is going to return. That'll technically make it 39 because he temporarily comes off the 40-man, though. So Justin Topa is still on the 60-day IL. He probably won't come back until mid-year this year, so you can keep him on the 60-day for a little while longer. John Del Gustave just got placed on the IL. He's on the 15-day IL, though, as well as Jake Cousins, who won't even resume throwing until next month. If you wanted to add somebody, it would probably be an outfielder, but a reminder that you already have Corey Ray, who's not hitting great down in AAA right now. There's going to be a lot of moves. I'm rambling right now. I think the Brewers and David Stearns are going to turn the wheels on something in the outfield, whether it's a corner outfielder, center fielder. Center fielders are hard to come by, especially ones that can hit. It's 
it's a tough call because you're probably going to have to give up something that you're really attached to, someone you really like, in order to get some production in center field. Unless they want to go really bold, and Bryce Terang has played a handful of games in center field this season. Uh, Double-checking the numbers on that for him in AAA. He's played five starts in center field this year. I don't think you want to throw him straight into center field in the big leagues. So don't get that thought in your mind for Bryce Terang if he's going to call up in that regard. I can go on and on. Not much to talk about today. That's really it for this episode. But let's get excited. Ace off today. Ace off. Max Freed, Corbin Burns. If you haven't been able to play hooky lately or if you want to call off work today, call in, sick, do something. Hey, today's a great day to get out to the ballpark. And even though it might be raining, remember, we've got a roof. So Max Freed, Corbin Burns, rematch of the matchup from two weekends ago. Can't wait to see that. It is a 12-10 start. An hour earlier, 12-10 start, okay, than usual. Uh, at home, American Family Field. Then the Brewers are off tomorrow against the uh, Nationals getting ready to come to town Friday through Sunday. That'll do it for this episode. Thanks so much for listening or watching here on YouTube. I'm Dominic Catronio. Back tomorrow with a recap episode and get you ready for the off day. Until then, keep on swinging. You are Locked On Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.